I mentioned Jeff Tunnicliffe off the top as the executive director. He's not that. He's more than that. <laughs> He's the secretary general, a much more lofty term, of the World Evangelical Alliance. And he is based out of Vancouver uh, and is working literally around the world. Welcome, Jeff. It's great to be here, Jim. You and I have connected as recently as just a few weeks ago on Skype uh, about the assassination of the only Christian uh, cabinet minister in Pakistan. Any follow-up to that story, by the way? Yeah, we're continuing to follow it. In fact, uh, we've just been trying to uh, generate some uh, concern in, around some of the, with some of the governments around the blasphemy law. Uh, we're also urging governments to send uh, senior leaders to uh, the memorial service of uh, uh, Minister Bhatti when it takes place in a few weeks. So, so it hasn't happened yet? Well, there's been, there's been one, there's been a funeral service, but there's going to be an official uh, memorial service. And um, we're asking governments to send high-level delegations uh, uh, to represent the concerns of the world uh, in that context. And would this be seen as a concern about religious freedom? Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and again, I think this is a time to tackle, actually, the, the proposed uh, the blasphemy law in, uh, in Pakistan. Now, when you stand up for uh, uh, the freedom of religion uh, as the uh, Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance, you're standing up for freedom of all religions, right? You must. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we believe that, you know, freedom of religion is for all people yeah. and that uh, people need to be able to express their faith, being able to change their faith as, as they feel led uh, without uh, coming under pressure or persecution or threat. Right. Now, for the sake of viewers who've not heard of the World Evangelical Alliance, uh, give me a little bit of a sketch, a little history. Sure. We, well, our, we root, our roots back in 1846. It was, it was a, uh, a ministry of unity, bringing the church together from around the world. Um, today we have 128 national bodies here in Canada, it's the Evangelical right. Fellowship of Canada, right. so that make up the World Evangelical Alliance, plus with hundreds of other organizations that, uh, that uh, are members of the World Evangelical Alliance. Uh, we serve a worldwide constituency now of 600 million Christians. Mm. Obviously the predominant number of those are in the Global South, in Latin America, in Asia, in Africa. Uh, and uh, we try to do uh, three things, really. We try to help the church around the world more effectively engage in its society. So we want to equip the church to engage in making a, an impact, a transformational impact in its society. Give me an example of uh, how that works on the ground. Uh, any, any country, any church, how do you, what, what do you do? Well, let me, let me give you a, a very prominent example right now. J just in the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, our fellowship in Egypt, as, as you know, yeah. Egypt has been going through this uh, yeah. tremendous change yeah. and uh, part of the whole region. And they're facing uh, new elections and, and very significant elections mm. in some, uh, in, in, uh, based on some new constitutional law in, in Egypt. Well, the churches in Egypt have said, we need to train, we need to equip our people how to know, engage in the public square, what it means to engage in the political life. Mm. So we're going to be training and equipping church leaders in Egypt uh, so that they can prepare churches to engage in the political process so that their voice is heard and as they are committed to nation building, building a new nation of Egypt, how can the church contribute to that in a positive way? So that's, that's just one example of how we're trying to equip uh, the church uh, to engage in, in, in a meaningful now, way. Now, in that Egyptian situation, you've got a church that's been, uh, to a greater or lesser degree, persecuted. Absolutely. So you, you've, you've got uh, the issue of, uh, uh, of that uh, on top of everything else. I mean, engaging with the government is one thing, but how, how do you... How do you uh, motivate a church who've kind of kept their heads down because of persecution to actually be visible and engaged? Well, I think we have to listen to what they want to say. And, yeah. and, and, the, and the exciting thing about the Christians in, in Egypt is that they're wanting to engage publicly. Uh, they're wanting to make a positive contribution. And they see this as a potential uh, turning point in their society. And, um, and so, yes, they realize that some are taking risks. But there are those in the broader Egyptian society who aren't Christians, but who are sympathetic, mm. who believe that there is a place for all voices at the table. Mm. And I think th those are the kind of people that we need to be engaging with. Yeah. Uh, the Middle East generally, um, uh, it does the evangelical church have much of a profile? Well, you're talking, you know, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Bahrain, Yemen, you know, all of these places. Well, the reality is the church is quite small in that region, yeah. and uh, but it's growing, and yeah. and uh, in each country is a little bit different, and they're they're under varying kinds of pressures. Um, but I think of the country of of uh, Morocco, for instance, and what's been interesting in Morocco that we've worked with there in the last number of years is that uh, there was a woman who was elected to the Moroccan Parliament, um, a Muslim, 
and uh, she studied um, all the religions of the world and discovered, and she felt that it was really Christianity, the only re religion that really cared about women. And um, so she asked one of my colleagues to speak in the Moroccan parliament on Jesus' attitude towards women in the New Testament. And through her political party, she established, uh, she got 35 people elected, uh, and uh, they've now changed the uh, family law in Morocco uh, from, uh, to match more European family law. And uh, so, again, here's someone that's discovered uh, the message of Christianity really does care about all people and, uh, and the impact that it can have on society. Uh, how many uh, years have you been involved now with the World Evangelical Alliance? Well, it feels like an eternity, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's, I'm entering my second term, and I have, uh, uh, my first term was five years, yeah. and I've just entered my second term. Uh, it must be pretty fulfilling for you. It's, it's uh, challenging every single day. I wake up and say, wow, what, what are the opportunities today? What are the challenges before us? Because we live in this 24-7 world. Things are happening in every part of the world, and we say, you know, where do, where do we uh, emphasize? What do we, uh, what do we do today? How do we, can we make a difference uh, in terms of the gospel uh, and uh, the witness for Christ in, in very complex circumstances? I keep telling my staff, all the easy jobs are done. Right. Now we need to tackle the really tough ones. Now, in terms of tough ones, what would be the toughest in your view? Well, certainly the, the conflict in, in the Middle East is certainly uh, going, the, the situation in Pakistan, I believe the, the situation in Pakistan geopolitically is probably one of the most challenging circumstances that we face in the world today. The, the potential for uh, disaster, not a uh, physical disaster, but a, a social disaster is, is huge there. Uh, the rise of the, and the training of young people there uh, to uh, Islamic fundamentalism, for instance, is, is, is very significant. Mm -hmm. And um, what that means for their society. It's a, there's more terrorist groups in ber uh, birth in Pakistan based there. And so what happens in Pakistan is pretty critical for the region. It's a nuclear power. And, and so, you know, what happens in that yeah. part of the world can impact uh, many parts of the world. So that may be the toughest. What is the most exciting spot for you right now? Oh, well, you know, there, there's so many stories you can tell, and that's, that's the great thing about my job. I think in some ways I have the best job in the world. Uh, it's challenging, but, you know, I get to travel the world and see where God is at work. And I get to go into places where, um, you know, you, people don't normally go to, but and you, you see where there's transformation that's yeah. taken place. And, but you see where the church is always on the front lines. You know, we've been talking about Japan, and we, yeah. and we see the devastation that's taken place in that country. But we see that the church, even though very small in, in Japan, is there on the front lines. They're delivering the water and the help and the care. And everywhere I go in the world, the church is there making a difference.